The story started in September with the rescue of Gigi, a little chick of a larikit coming from Queensland, which is considered a pest in Western Australia. And he came on my shoulder all the way in the car to my place and he was bleeding because an attacking crow was trying to finish him off after taking his tail out. He was only six weeks old and I'm saying he, it could be a she, you will only find out that once they lay eggs. And after a little while and 20 kilometers on the back of the seat of my car, he seemed to settle down and luckily I was able to find, even though it was a Sunday night and I was with a girlfriend, a very quick way of um, getting him into good hands and the rest of the story follows. So how, what's the special care you can get? Feeding them hot, warm, rearing food every three or four hours during daylight hours because obviously during the night mum and dad wouldn't feed them but because we go to bed late yes they get an extra feed at night and she's only about a week old but their their feathers grow very fast and what happened to her she was found by a member of the public it must have been pushed out of the nest in a tree oh, because you said that why do they push them out of their nest if there's three babies and two babies push what the weakest one out those two babies get all the food So the oldest baby that I just showed you, mm -hmm. I've, he's old enough to be weaned now, so mm -hmm. I'm giving him puree pear, mm -hmm. and we've got rearing mis mixture, which luckily I've got a kettle that tells me what the temperature of the water is, ah. so I boil it to about 50 degrees, mm -hmm. because the babies like hot food, mm -hmm. and then I make a mixture up, and I feed them with Mill syringe for each syringe full, and we try and give them sorry, three mil syringe, and we try and give them about 15 to 18 mils a day. Mm -hmm. Um, a feed, mm -hmm. and, and, and they, they're happy to, they, yep, yeah. And because they're so young, we can bypass the tongue and direct it straight into the crop. Mm -hmm. So, as soon as we can see the crop is full, mm -hmm. then we know that they're full and then they can have a sleep for three, four hours and then we do it again. Aww. <laughs> and again, and again, and again. So at night you don't though, from, from when you go to sleep in the morning? From when we go to sleep at night and then when we wake up, usually around dusk, yes. um, daybreak, yeah. then we feed them. So. And this is all at your own expense? Yes. Mm. And you know I said to you when we got Gigi, that I was going to give her some first aid. Yes. That's the mixture that we get from, it's called Pets Direct. And that's what the vets use. Mm -hmm. So we get that and we mix that in with the rearing food. Mm -hmm. And that has albumin and all sorts of things that are good for it. So it relaxes them so they're not stressed, they're not anxious. Mm -hmm. It gives them an appetite and they're a lot happier. Isn't that it way. great that they worked it all out? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you know, like about. This is Freddy. He's one of the residents of the Parrot's Perch. He is a male eclectus from northeastern Australia, Queensland. And he was owned by a bachelor and he had the run of the house. And the bachelor then had a girlfriend who Freddy decided he would attack her. So Freddy had to go and he was placed in a pet shop for sale and for three months he stayed there and we were approached to buy him at a reduced rate because it wasn't a good environment for Freddy. So now Freddy is like our mascot for the parrot perch. Oh, you've got a strong beak, haven't you? Yeah? 
Ooh, but he's not trying no, to bite. No, he's not. He's not. The beak looks a little bit like two cans. Yeah. That's People nice. say it looks like plastic. Oh, something that that's been hard. Moved. Don't be naughty. No. I don't think you need it. Something to to cut your teeth. <laughs> he's getting on your collar. Oh right. Okay. He's talking to you now. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Oh, what happened to this little one? Right, this one, he was found being attacked by a hawk near Safety Bay mm -hmm. and he was taken to a vet and the vet phoned us because they know that we take on the lorikeets. He's bored because wherever he was, he must have been under a lot of stress and anxiety and that causes them to pluck and in parts of him, he's plucked so much it will never grow back. And it's not uh, self-flagellation like sometimes they do. Yeah, they, it, yeah. through anxiety and stress yeah. when they're not happy. Yeah. But he's a cheeky boy. Yeah. And isn't that nice that he's so flaccid and happy on your shoulder? It's <laughs> <laughs> a beautiful bird. He's giving you kisses. Hello. He's giving you kisses. Hello. And we want to see Gigi as well. And oh, where you know why Gigi? Because it's both a female and a male name. Hello. Look good. As long as you're as good as the bird. No, but don't. That will come up. From uh, a lady who cares for the elderly. Mm -hmm. And his owner got put into aged care and she couldn't oh. take the birds with her. So we got them. Unfortunately, his partner had the PBFD beak and feather disease that some of them carry. Oh. So she died of the illness, but because he was with her, there's a good chance he could carry it. Mm. So he's left on his own there, and then we put this little boy in with him. And when you take this, when Brian takes this one out, he cuddles into Brian and he goes, Sorry, sorry. And it's like, Brian said, Quick, come here. And it's, he's sitting there going, Sorry. And it's like, Oh, hello. So it's sorry all you can say, hey? I wonder why, hey? Well, what we've noticed in a lot of breeds is it's the males that talk, not the females. Yeah. Oh, really? Yes. That's, that's unusual, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the revenge of nature. <laughs> you don't see you happy, boy. Oh, you're happy. Hey, you're happy. Hello. Hey, hello. Don't you do that. What is he doing? He just flapped his wings at him just to say, stop it. Oh, he's jealous. Yep. How old would they be? They're ranging between nine months and a year old. Yes. And they come them... out sometimes? Or? No, these ones don't because they, they're more wild. You put, yeah, some of them are getting used to coming forward, but because they're a lot older when we took them on, and also, if I remember correctly, a lot of what you do is by intuition, isn't it? Yeah. Because you only started about a year and a half ago. Yeah. Yes. So it's amazing how much you've learned. Oh, yeah. I love to see them with this. But they've got such beautiful plumage. Oh, they are gorgeous. And here they've got so many things that they can hang on from. Yeah. And Play around There's somebody with. sitting in the top of the tri triple house yes. on the top floor. <laughs> Better view. <laughs> but a lot of them seem to have paired. Yes. The, her owner has the fibromyalgia. Oh yes. And this is Mojo. Mojo. He's another. Oh, yes. um, and they made a couple, did they? They turned into a couple. Um, his people or surrendered. A <laughs> His people surrendered him because they took him to the vet to get his wings clipped and he was so traumatised by it, he attacked the whole family. Aww. And for two weeks he tried to win them back over. Uh, they tried to win him back over and he wouldn't be part of it. So she said, well, you take him. And then Leah came, uh, Leah came with the one eye and we just threw them together and they paired up. This is Henley and Coop. Coops was in an old old gentleman's house who never cleaned his birdcage oh, for years and happy. he yeah. hardly got out of bed to feed himself, let alone the birds. And he 
got up with Henley, hooked up with Henley, and they're the two that got out and jumped out in the sea. Oh, right, 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 right. In the other race, we had a, one fly out as I walked in to see them. Next day, he's sitting on the top, he wanted back in, he'd had enough of the week. <laughs> So do you have any any more flying out at the moment that no. you come back? No. Um. Hello darling, where are you? Hello. Hello. I love the plumage with a speck of blue purple that they have and there's a one on the back this. Now she's got a tight, slightly different blue. She's sitting on that round dish on the back wall. She's got a different mm -hmm. for three months because um, a relative was dying, who oh. has now passed. So this is the female lorikeet, mm -hmm. and this is called a superb parrot. Superb. Superb parrot, and his name is Charlie. Are they nice and friendly? Charlie makes out that he's a big rough fish person, but then when you put your hand in, he runs away. Oh. <laughs> but Laurie likes giving kisses. Oh. 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 And Mummy said I had to make sure Laurie kept kissing me so that she didn't forget. So when Mum comes home, Mum will get kissed. Didn't she? Mm. Oh, mm. <laughs> oh, is he the only one that kisses okay. you in the mouth? There's a few that will give you a kiss. Come on. Oh, good girl. She had a clip wing. And um, she's molten at the moment. She's learned to talk since she's been here. Oh, really? Listening to the other birds. Oh, really? What kinds of things do they say? Um, what is it you do say? You say, what? But we give her toilet roll, empty really? toilet roll holders. Yes. And she puts her head inside. Oh. And tries to get her head out the other end. <laughs> Because she's found out that if she shouts into it, it echoes, it magnifies her voice. <laughs> Isn't that right? Oh, so she's really t testing the sounds and everything. Yeah. How old would she be? She is she's, she's over, she's about a year old now. Come on. <laughs> if you don't mind me asking, did the licenses cost you? Is it per bird or is it for the lot? For the whole lot. Um, we have the top one, which I think is fifty dollars for three years per bird. No, oh, for the whole lot. Oh, good. But to ha to own a lorikeet, it's thirty dollars for three years to get a license for a lorikeet. And I, you, you said that you're not subsidised. No. If somebody seeing this, and I can't promise anything because I don't even know who would watch, but. Yeah. If I put it online and people see you, who can they contact and how can they contact you to make donations? They can contact me at The Parrot's Perch. We've got a website, www.theparrotsperch. Can you spell The Parrot's Perch? T-A-T-P-A-R-R-O-T-S-P-E-R-C-H dot com. Yes. Excellent. And if they wanted to call you and ring you, can they call they you? They can call me on 0414-092-902. I really hope that you will have, because I, I think a lot of us would like to do something similar, but we don't have the patience, we don't have the time, we don't have the knowledge, we don't have the means. Would you like to say a little bit about how you got started into this? Because it's very interesting from what I remember. Yeah. What it was, was um, what got us into it was at the time I had just been made redundant from my job doing as an accounts officer and at the same time I was diagnosed with a bunch of lung transplant unit. Because of that I had depression big time, obviously, and my husband who is a fly in fly out worker was concerned for when he wasn't here what would be an incentive to get me out of bed even because I was that stressed. And he looked at the lorikeets and found out that they were classified as a pest in WA. And because it's not the bird's fault, it's human 
mankind did this. Yeah, we are taking the habitat. Yeah. It's a bit like the refugees in yeah. the bird world, except they can fly, so they go further. Exactly. And because they are nectar feeders, they tend to go for vineyards. So obviously the grape growers aren't happy, the vineyards aren't happy. So we decided we'd try and pay back a little bit for what man has done. So that's how we got started into it. And we started off with five birds and then it's just increased and increased and we decided to let vets know what we do because a lot of vets had no other choice but to euthanize and a lot of vets don't want to and they also some of the wildlife people they will not accept lorikeets like native art because they're not native to wa so they would only euthanize them so they're only too happy now to give our details out to anybody who approaches them to help the lorikeets. Because also, in my experience, when I gave you that little bird that looks so happy now and so settled, um, you also have to drive a long way, often, to go and pick them up. And it's a lot of petrol costs. And, yes. it's a lot of, and that's all. If somebody hearing this can help, it would, it would really alleviate that, wouldn't it? A bit? It would, because sometimes I can't, because I have to look at our finances and what we're capable, capable of from week to week, I have to try and get as many trips in in one day to reduce our fuel costs and the wear and tear on the vehicle and things. So I try to do a trip up to Perth every week because my husband flies in one week and out the next. So I try and incorporate a lot of pickups and collections, but obviously there are times when I can't do that, when somebody actually needs help now, and I just have to go, right, I'm on my way. Of course. For looking after him. He was brought to me by a gentleman whose mother-in-law had recently died of cancer. He'd recently lost two of his brothers, and he was due to go into hospital for a triple heart bypass which happened last week. And this bird picked up on the stress and anxiety of the guy and his wife and started plucking all his feathers out. And one Sunday he plucked what they call a blood feather, which means it's actually got blood passing through to oh. it. And then he plucked it out, there was blood everywhere. So the owner rushed him to a vet and the vet said he's anxious, he's picking up on all your stress. So the guy came to me the next day in tears and said, will you take, will you rehome my bird? And you could see how much they love each other. Mm. So the gentleman's trying to get me to rehome him and he's very emotional. And I went, no, I refuse to rehome your bird. And he stopped and he said, I'm very sorry, what? And I said, no, I won't rehome your bird. But I will look after it until you're in a better place, health-wise, emotionally. And we've had him quite a few weeks now. He, he's put on weight. He looks he's, happy. He stopped plucking. Um, last week, we took him back home because they were having a barbecue with his, his parents. And we took Ozzy back with us so we could see his dad and his mum and everybody. And we decided for all sakes, because everybody looked so happy, that Ozzy would go home again. Happy. So he does what he does his own thing. He literally has the run of the house. Mm. Yeah. Gotcha. He's so sweet and just yeah, that's the story that made me yeah. weep when you told me. Because when you said no and the reaction of yeah. the man. Hello. Because he'd worked himself up that he had to rehome him, he didn't actually think somebody would refuse and just say, I will look after him. Look on it, he's having a sleep over at Auntie Mickey's. Yeah, I guess he was worried about the length of time and the recovery. Yeah. yeah. But now both of them know that he is going to go home because he's had a few nights at home. Mm -hmm. So it's just back in a while to go through the operation. And so, he probably likes Brian because he was used to a man. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, I mean, obviously he had a family, but uh, more, more of a man's bird, yeah. I'd say. But in, in his household, there are three chihuahua dogs, 
a cat, an English blue. Not, it's like a Russian blue, but an English blue is all stocky. Mm -hmm. oh, with the, the cat. Dog. That's a dog or cat? Oh, cat. <laughs> not Russian blue. Are we likely to see them around? Or? No, not. <laughs> but that's what he has in his own house. Uh, oh, he, he has a Facebook page all to himself. And tell me, what happened to the chest? Because of the stress and the anxiety, he was plucking all his feathers out. Ah, oh, so congratulations. Yeah, what so you said yeah. earlier. A bit like the bulls on the teeth. Yeah, you said that earlier. Oh, look. But he started... He's, he's camera shy. <laughs> but he you started... So um, sweet. He started so growing sweet. feathers. So, so sweet. Oh, you are a star. So you've got your own Facebook page. Yes, it's called Aussie's Antics. Aussie's Antics. Antics. Aussie's <laughs> Antics. Excuse me. It's all right to leave the cage open there? Yeah, it'll be fine. He'll, he'll just hang around there. This is Houdini. Who? Houdini. Houdini? I called him Houdini because he was found in Medora Bay. He came here and then he proceeded to escape from his cage. Oh. So I call him Houdini. <laughs> he was rehomed about a month or two back with two lorikeets. But I got a phone call yesterday when I was picking the two lorikeets up, being told by the owner, he's bitten my wife, he's bitten my daughter, come and take him away. Oh. So Houdini says, what's the boy to do? What are you doing? What's the boy to do? What? What's the boy to do? Are you going to talk? Oh, he What's had that? a little chirp. What are you doing? What's a boy to do? What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. We have a lot of lot of keys for the fowls and nobody claims them. Yes. So then we have to look after them. But uh, does, how do they catch them? Because well, there was babies also, were they? Yes, or the one at the back has had a broken wing and he was on sale in a pet shop. Ah. So um, a customer complained, so they gave it the bird to a customer. She gave it to her friend who was going to try and rehabilitate him and release him. And then she found out that he had a broken wing that had never been repaired. So then she contacted us and said, can you take him on? So I went up to um, Leaderville and got him. So uh, which ones you can let free and which ones in, inside, obviously? Yeah. Um, the ones that I know, I think I can see <laughs> But I don't know if you've noticed, the one on the first is one-legged. She's had her leg removed from the breast. Oh. So we call her Eileen. Oh. And this is Dexy. After the group Dexy's Midnight Runners, who oh, said, yes. come on I leave, <laughs> because she has to leave, because uh -huh. she's got one leg. So but both of these were found in Armadale, mm -hmm. she was found hopping down the road, mm -hmm. so somebody caught her and took her to a carer, a couple of days later he was found, so the carer put them into the same cage, and, and asked them to get on, and asked for us to go and pick them up. When we got him home, we put grapes in and he picked the grape up and took it to her and held it for her because he knew she only had one leg and she couldn't hold it. Yeah. Oh. So it was like they understand disability. Oh. It's, it's, it's awesome. So beautiful. And tell me. Oh, nice. flying into oh, here. Yeah. So what's this? They all know it's a place to be. <laughs> Hello. Hello. You two are so off. <laughs> Dala, did you give the name to all these birds or somebody yes. else had given them? Or? Well, we call him Goose because he stopped off at this farm, stayed a while, but then started attacking their goose. Ah. Oh. So because he did that, we call him Goose. Ah. Oh. <laughs> I try and call them in association yes, with different yes, things. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, very nice. Unless enough. we're given a, a specific name to call them. Yeah, yeah. And this one here is Falcon because he was found in Falcon. Actually, as soon as you said Falcon, he turned around. So he knows. Yes. He knows very well. And is he a restless soul or is he. A... he he's quite happy. He likes female women with long hair. 
Oh, okay. That's with me, young. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and and that can't even tell. Because <laughs> he got out when we had a wind and the blue the and all the, the last got out. He didn't stayed in the garden. No, Houdini came into the alfresco, Goose stayed in the garden, Falcon flew off, and another female one flew off. He was found two days later up by the school on the estate, and he jumped onto a young girl's shoulder, who had blonde hair, so I know he likes young girls with blonde hair. <laughs> and then Billy, the female, flies in every day with other galahs to come and say hello. Really? She, she wants to be free, so she's free. Ah. Oh. But Goose is quite extraordinary for the fact that he says, who's a cheeky boy? And when it gets to dusk, he goes into whisper mode. So instead of talking, he whispers, Sorry? Hello, gorgeous. This is <laughs> But he, he literally goes from talking to whispering. <laughs> So it's very great. delicate, very delicate, very delicate. and very intelligent, yeah. highly intelligent. Oh, all birds are. He was found in Mandurah, very dehydrated and starving, and very quiet. So when we got him, we um, rehydrated him, we gave him food, and after a few days, he started talking. And he came out saying, Roger! Roger. Oh, he is the one. What are you doing? What are you doing? Roger, what are you doing? Help, help, help! <laughs> yeah, he's really been uh, psychologically... Abused, definitely. Abused. Poor thing. And nobody's come forward for him. Now, he really loves men. And the gentleman who owns Elvis said he might even take him on. Oh. Hello, Roger. What are you doing, Roger? Hello. He's a good boy. So you do leave him out sometimes? Or? Yeah, he doesn't like being out the cage. Oh, really? He goes to Brian, and Brian will hold him tight, yes. and he says he's shivering like anything. We've tried him in an aviary. He's too frightened. He, just, he, he likes the security of the cage. Why is he trying to bite you? It's just his way, but I have my way of getting around him. <laughs> Don't I? Come here. You can do oh, a kiss. Oh, kiss. <laughs> good boy. What are you doing, Roger? Oh. <laughs> you good boy. What are you doing, Roger? Good boy. She's out the back. Oh. She was out the back the week, and we knew she was there. But legally, we couldn't go and get her because it would be classed as theft. Really? So In the what, bush? Yeah. So what we had to do was wait, and then somebody knocked on the door and said, is that Chuck yours out the back? And I went, no. She said, can you go and rescue it? Because we're fighting the snake's going to get it. And I went, that's all we needed, for somebody to ask us to rescue it. Uh, and ah, we can do that legally. Okay. Fantastic. And she pays away because she gives us an egg nearly every day. Oh, really? Yeah. She looks very happy. Look, she's doing a nest. And... Yeah, and she loves Brian again. <laughs> she sits on Brian's shoulder. She thinks she's a parrot. By a lady who has fibromyalgia. Uh, so she said, would you take him on? And there's also a female lorikeet that came with him who's only got one eye. She's in one of the aviaries. But Clive isn't, he's, isn't that tame. He'll let me pet him. He'll do a happy dance for me. Are you going to do dance? Cocky dance, cocky dance, dance, dance. Oh, look, John. Dance, dance, cocky dance, 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 dance. <laughs> You're a good boy, aren't you, Clive? Oh, look, oh, look. You like your award, eh? You like the scratching. Because I noticed they do it to each other, yeah. so... He's a good boy. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. So how old would Clive be? Clive again, a lot of the time, he's not too young. You, you can tell by the nobbles round the eyes. So he's not young, Hello. but he's not an old old. Hello. He's probably middle-aged. Hey, Clive. 
He could be about 20 years old. Oh, how you enjoying it, aren't you? Yeah, because bird, uh, uh, Joe hasn't had much experience with birds. Not that I've had much at all either. Uh -huh. But so I, I think uh -huh. it's good because oh look, it's, it's actually bird. lying down. <laughs> uh -huh. I think you've got closer. a better touch than I. Is enjoying yours <laughs> better than mine? <laughs> Come a bit closer, right? Eh? No, no, the bird. My finger can only go that far. You gotta come, on, come, come a little closer. And with the mouth, all this lovely little oh, noise he's making. Oh, look, he now he's actually very intelligent. He's actually getting. Oh, look at that! All the pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he gives you the other side. <laughs> Good boy, Clyde. Well, considering you're a bit of a mischief at times, we're really very lucky, aren't we? Definitely. Very yeah. lucky. I oh, think it's exactly look at this. Yeah. Are we taking too much of your time? No. Beautifully soft feathers. Yep. Dance, cocky, dance, cocky, dance, 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 cocky, dance, cocky, dance. Oh, you little sook. <laughs> you put your head through the bars. He, 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 he wouldn't be safe coming out, would he? And no. He, and he knows how to lock. Oh, yeah, he knows uh, lock, how to get the So attention. that's why you've got the edge. Birds are very clever. Yes, Mark. That's why a lot of cages have this on the top. So if they can undo that, they still can't open it. Because they, they just rescues them. So they're, they're very wild. So they'll just end up in a in one of the aviaries. And So you've only had them a few days. Yes. Hello, but they seem to get on with each yeah. other without fighting. So, so we've got to ch we have to quarantine everything for the fact that they might carry a disease and we don't want to give the disease to the healthy birds. Of course. So of course. they go into quarantine. So um, would that one be about six weeks like Gigi yeah. was? And of course, you, you, you will never know the sex unless no, there unless are you eggs. Get it, that or are... you get them tested. And this one? This one's another young one. You can see it's still got a bit of black on the beak. Oh, actually, I don't understand how to un to look at the beak and tell the right. age. If you... The young, they're born with a pure black beak. Mm -hmm. And as they grow older, the black reduces until they go... This one's got a little touch of darkness. And then they go to a yellow or orange colour. Mm -hmm. When they're when once they're about a year old, mm -hmm. they go yellow or orange. Ah, oh, okay. So if we look at the trees, if they were close enough, yeah. that's what we look for the dark and, yeah. and the yellowy. Hey. Is it like a twenty-eight? Yeah. Um, Hello. He was found on Southwest Highway. He'd been hit by a truck or something, oh. and his wing was all bashed up. And the gentleman who found him is a volunteer for depot, and he rescued it, took it home, and its wing was hanging on by a thread of skin. So he cut the skin, uh, but he can't fly, so he can't go back into the wild. But if you, if we took him to um, a vet or a wildlife centre, they would euthanise him because they said he, he wouldn't be able to go back out. So they say it's not right to cage him. But we're of the opinion he has a right to a life. So he not only he also seems to be using his wings quite yeah. nicely. Sorry, Joe, I tap in. So we're trying to calm him and tame him. He's not an ancient is he? He's from South Australia. Okay, so, okay, but there were twenty eight and twenty eight so yeah. is, is sorry. People are feeding magpies mince mm -hmm. mince beef. Mm. And it's causing a deformity in them. So oh. his feet are deformed and his oh. legs are. Oh, is that why he's not moving? Yeah. So when we first got him, um, he couldn't use his claws at all. We're starting to see movement in them. So what we've done is, and it might be a little bit naughty, is we're feeding him dog sausage meat which has got all the vegetables calcium and all the vitamins in it we're adding an insectivore 
we're feeding him mealworm and he's actually starting to use his claws a bit so if we can get him to a stage where he's actually moved because he can't hold his weight up yet so how long have you had him we've just had him a week and mm. um, the person who, who had him she got him off her farm because he was being attacked by other magpies because they knew he was weak so um again so that affect their own because they're weak yeah it's mother nature so what we said <laughs> oh you good boy <laughs> let me get this for you, you want that Oh, oh, oh. Got it? I let go. Oh, get it out of the water. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, listen. Pal. He listened. <laughs> Thanks, pal. You ready? Oh. It's oh. just so great, Nikki, how are you you are telling us every single story and they've all got they've all got a story. Yeah. Hello, little one. You'll be fine if you're already moving a bit. I'm sure you will. Hey. Oh, you good boy. He is an olive lorikeet because he's got the green head. Um, his owner was splitting up from her partner and she couldn't take him with her. So we bought him with the view of we had a, somebody who wanted one. So we said we would sell him. And then she said she backed out, and then we decided to keep him because he's a good boy. How much do little birds like that cost? 150. Mm. So this is original of where? Um, I'm not only to say I'm pretty sure they're from over east as well. Because we've got a couple of olives. But you know, I'm so impressed that whenever you take them out of the cage or you open the door, they don't want to go away. You know, like we have had birds that have actually escaped and they stayed in the tree. We had two that went into the tree and we came home and Brian went, Nicky, Henry and Coops have escaped. And I went, and they looked the tree and he had to take the fence down, get the ladder, go up the tree and they go straight to him but they wouldn't come down because they didn't know how to fly down uh, they don't know how to fly up they don't know how to get down once they've flown up uh, you good boy yes you are you're my such great an boy interesting green isn't it beautiful bird what yeah. no it's no no not in the time yet Flex. hey what do you say uh -oh. hey. it's flex well, I think he's about five years old. Yeah. Beautiful. 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 Hey, he's trying to give you a kiss. Yeah, he's trying to, to lick to give your you a kiss. Okay. As long as you don't bite me. What are you doing? What are you doing? I, I just um, was very curious to know about the food you give them and the quantity and the type and um, how you know expensive it all gets for you every month. Yes, um, because the main feeding items for the lorikeets are apple, pears, grapes, sweet corn, and obviously depending on the time of year at the moment, grapes are very expensive. Sweet corn's very expensive, so then we have to feed more apples and pears, which aren't cheap either, but we try to get reduced to clear as and when we can. If not, we just have to buy what we can for the birds, because they can't do without. You and know? is the community nice, like the supermarkets with their throwouts and uh, delis and places like that? Are they helpful? Not really, because a lot of them have to justify to their owners what they've got to they have to send their wastage back to headquarters so if i could do a deal possibly i'd have to go travel up to jandicott or wherever headquarters is to say spud shed so it's easier to go to trying to get what's reduced to clear in the supermarkets just to try and keep the cost down and the other thing that i've noticed is uh, you know you mentioned that you went to a lot of places that were where you met me you know where i'm residing at the moment and um 
it seems to me like you do a lot of mileage every week. Have you ever calculated how much you are driving just to get these birds and save them on an average? Not really, because I think that, that would put me off doing what we do. <laughs> so I'd rather not look at it like that and just hope I can refill the car up when it's the, the No, I'm asking price. because I hope that somebody can send you some <laughs> petrol vouchers. <laughs> yeah, I, I see that. Because we're, we're down near Mandurah and a lot of places are catered for north of the river, but anywhere south of the river isn't catered for, plus for the lorikeets, which are a pest to a lot of places, we've travelled as far as Yanchet before just to save So how many years. kilometres would that be? About 60? No, 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 oh, 160. First, first nearly just under 100. So up to Yamchet, you're probably talking another nearly a hundred again. Gosh, so that's a lot, just for lot. one bird. Well, this was for two birds, but at the end of the day, if we didn't do it, what would happen to no, them? No, I know. So, yes, it turns out expensive sometimes because we've got seed to buy, we've got... Um, the fruit to buy, the vegetables to buy, and then on top of that, because the lorikeets are nectar feeders, we have to buy dry formula, wet formula, which a seven and a half kilo bag, <clears throat> which only lasts a month, is nearly ninety dollars each. Mm -hmm. So it's I've got my little job that helps pay for some of it, but at the end of the day. We've got to do what we can because the birds can't do it for themselves. Yeah, you, no, no, you've been <laughs> absolutely wonderful. And the cages, do you and your husband actually build them? This one here, we built from scratch. Um, it's not ideal. Um, other, some of the other aviaries, we bought that second hand. Um, the top one where the engine ring necks are and this small one where Joy is, that we bought and at the same time we bought the engine ring necks off the, the owners because the husband had Alzheimer's and the wife had medical problems, she couldn't cope so they did us a good deal because we, they knew what we were doing. Um, we try and get donated cages because obviously we have a limited amount and then when there's more lost and found birds we've got to try and house them somehow occasionally when people do the clearing um there are cages that, but they're usually very small so they wouldn't really suit those birds that fly a lot yes it? so yes. what we do is the corellas and the galahs we are trying to rehome because we're finding a lot of people aren't coming forward for their birds but in the meantime, we'll have more corellas, more galahs coming in that have been found. So we try and look after them to the best that we can. We try, we're trying to get cages donated. As and when we see one going up for free, we'll contact the people and explain who we are, that we're the Parrot's Church and what we do. Mm -hmm. And they seem to be very happy to donate their cage to mm -hmm. our cause. Mm -hmm. You've been so great and, you know, my heart goes out to you because I couldn't do it, although I love animals. <laughs> but um, can you please, again, just in case there is some lovely soul with the means to help you financially, repeat slowly, you don't need to spell it again, the website and also give your phone number, please. Yes, it's www.theparrotsperch.com.au we're also uh, on Facebook called The Parrot's Perch. And my name's Nikki, and my phone number is 0414-092-902. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nikki and Brian, for what you're doing for these gorgeous birds. And so much also for, in particular, picking up Gigi that I was so worried about and seems to be very, very happy where he is, although he's not featuring in this particular movie. And Joe for taking me all the way there to see them all.